What's going on? My name's Jay, and today I'm going to show you the difference between log wheels and primary wheels in DaVinci Resolve. Let's take a look. When I first switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, one of the things that confused me right off the bat was the difference between primary wheels and log wheels. At first, I just kind of assumed that log wheels were only supposed to be used on log footage, and I was very wrong about that. And it's a really good thing that I looked it up and I learned the truth and I figured out what log wheels are for and what primary wheels are for because it actually ended up making color grading my footage so much easier. So without any further ado, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and I will show you the difference between log wheels and primary wheels. Okay, so we're here in the color page in DaVinci Resolve and I've got a gradient frame queued up. It's really the best way that I can show you the difference between primary wheels and log wheels and how they interact with your footage. And let's start with primary wheels since that's usually what people I think use the most and they really act the same way as curves, which is if you take Take a look at your curves let's just go over to the red curve if you start messing with one point on that red curve you'll see that the entire image is still affected and the primary wheels act in the same exact way so if we start putting some teal into the shadows you'll see that teal actually ends up going up along the entire gradient image and then if we go the opposite direction and put some orange into the highlights that actually comes back and it counteracts the teal that you put into the shadow. So no matter what you do, it's affecting the entire image. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to is the fact that primary wheels deal with lift, gamma, and gain, not shadows, midtones, and highlights like a lot of people assume. If you come over here to log wheels, you'll see now we're dealing with shadows, midtones, and highlights. See, the difference between log wheels and primary wheels is that primary wheels, when you move one of the wheels, it will affect the entire image. Color wheels, on the other hand, work within a specific luminance range within your footage. So you'll see if we come over to shadows and we start putting some blue into the shadows, you'll see that the highlights up here remain primarily untouched. And if we go into the highlights and we start putting some orange into the highlights, you'll see that again, the shadows remain untouched, but now you have orange in the highlights. And same thing with the midtones. Let's push some orange into the midtones. And you'll see again, the shadows and the highlights remain untouched. Log wheels also give you an extra bit of control using low range and high range to control the mix between the shadows, the highlights, and the midtones. So if we come down here to the bottom, you'll see LR and HR, that's low range and high range. Let's go ahead and drop low range all the way down. And you'll see that a lot of the teal that was in our shadows has now turned orange and we can control the mix by slowly dragging the low range back up until we have the amount of teal that we want in our shadows. Then if we come over here to high range and drop that all the way down, you'll see everything turns orange. And as we drag that high range back up, we can really just choose how much orange we want in our highlights, how much teal we want in our shadows, how much orange we want in our midtones, and all of that. So now that we understand the difference between primary wheels and log wheels, let's take a look at an actual clip and I'll show you how to use both to color grade your footage. All right, so we are back in DaVinci Resolve. We've got an actual clip queued up. It's the same old test footage that I always use, people having fun at a carnival. The first thing we're gonna do is do a little bit of a teal and orange color grade using the primary wheels. And that's pretty easy to do. We just come over here and we go into lift and we drop some teal into the shadows. And you'll see that the entire image has now been manipulated a little bit. Now we're gonna come over here to the highlights and we're gonna push some orange into the highlights. And you'll see once again that the entire image has been affected. Drop some more blue in there and just go ahead and deactivate that node so you can see the difference. Now let's go ahead and reset that node grade and we're gonna pop over to log wheels. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pump some blue into the shadows, some orange into the highlights. And you see if we just 
deactivate that node real quick, you do see a little bit of a change, mostly in saturation, not really much in the color mix. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the low range all the way down and you'll see that a lot of the orange has been taken out of the highlights. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to start raising that low range up until we see some of that orange coming back. That looks pretty good there. Then we're gonna move on to high range. I'm gonna drop that all the way down. You see the blue has been taken out of the shadows. And we're gonna start raising that high range up until we've got a good mix of teal and orange. And that looks good right about there. So if we go ahead and deactivate that node, you'll see what it looked like just after color correction and reactivate it. There is our teal and orange color grade. And just for added measure, we'll go ahead and add a node, come over to our Luma versus saturation curves, and we're gonna desaturate those blacks by dragging that left point all the way down, bringing the saturation up in the midtones, and there you have it. By the way, I've got a playlist full of tutorials that'll help you learn the ins and outs of DaVinci Resolve. If you want to check that out, that's linked right up here. And right down here, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you should watch. And if you want to learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you in the next video.